my best and worst luxury purchases of 2023. Feel free to save yourself a lot of money based on my mistakes. Hey, if you are new here, my name is Steph and I will pop links in the description box down below for you so that you can shop along with this video. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my best purchases, working my way up to what I think is the best purchase I made in 2023. And then I'm going to be moving on to my worst luxury purchases. My first best purchase is a bag and it is a bag that I've purchased before in a different colorway. I still have it actually. And I just knew if I had a different color of this bag, I would wear it a lot more. And it has turned out definitely to be one of my best purchases. It is my Aspinall of London trunk bag. Now Louis Vuitton are quite synonymous with creating trunk bags, but they are collector's items. They can cost a lot of money. It has like a champagne, color hardware. It does come with a strap here as well, so I can crossbody and shoulder it. Honestly, look at the lining inside of this bag, like the beautiful cherry red. And this trunk bag retails at, I believe it's around just under 500 pounds in the UK, about $660 in the US. Again, I'll link it down below. This has got to be one of my best purchases in terms of a statement piece that I absolutely Love. Now on the topic of affordable luxury pieces, especially when it comes to bags, um, another one of my best purchases by far has to be the Demelier Vancouver bag. This to me, I get Celine Teen Triumph vibes, I get Hermes Constant vibes, it's very much that kind of shape of bag, but again, a fraction of the price. I like this so much so that I actually got this in, I have it in the taupe colour as well. I rave about this bag all the time. Again, a really great price point. I believe they're around £400 in the UK, about $500 in the US. Um, the great thing about Demelia is when you order on their website, you actually get free international shipping. All your duties and taxes are paid, so you're not going to get stung with anything if you do decide to order internationally. I find this a really easy bag to use, and when I do wear it, I get a lot of people asking me, like, what is that bag? Which is a sign of a really great piece. You get one big compartment, a smaller compartment, there on the front and you can double the strap up like this and wear it as a shoulder bag or you can extend it you can adjust the strap as well and wear it as a longer shoulder bag or you can cross body it now in case you haven't noticed already I am a bag kind of girly I love to collect my designer bags I think they really add something to a look and I have said in the past that I'm not so into my jewelry pieces However, I will say that will change in 2023. And easily, some of the best pieces that I acquired in 2023 have completely changed my mind. I now really enjoy a beautiful piece of jewelry. I think just like a bag, they can really add something to an outfit. And in particular, this has been driven by Idil. Now I've worked with Idil quite a few times and they are kindly the sponsors of this part of today's video. So a few weeks ago, I actually unboxed a few new pieces that have literally barely left my body since they arrived. I got sent the absolutely stunning glow and force bracelet set. Um, they have quite a few different bracelet sets. You can buy them individually or you can buy a few if you want to fast track your arm stack game. I also received the Grace necklace, which is one that has been on my wish list for the longest time. And I like to stack my Grace necklace up with the Lena. Look how stunning this is, um, but you can adjust these chains so that you can stack them like this. And one of the best things about Adil when it comes to the bracelets, some of the earrings as well, is all the pieces are generally modular. So that means you can use them for different things. So for example, I also received, this is my favorite piece, my all time favorite piece, which is the Kaya earring. And it is this attachment here. So you can actually wear the stud by itself or you can attach the different attachments but for me, the Kaya, this is just over half a carat of lab-grown sustainable diamonds. That is what they use in all their jewellery. So if you are looking to approach your jewellery collection in a more sustainable way, this is the way to do it. Oh, and of course, my power cuff. This never leaves my ear. I just love it. It's like two rows of diamonds. It's absolutely gorgeous. I have the Kaya earring for this side as well, so I decided that I needed the set on both sides, and it is just enough. Like, the sparkle of them is actually 
incredible. Now all the jewelry pieces from Adil are solid gold as well. So if you're like me and you just like to kind of live in your pieces, you don't want to take them off, you want to head in the shower with them, that is totally fine because they're solid gold and they aren't going to tarnish. Adil have kindly given me a 10% off discount code for you to use across the entire range. I will flash the code on the screen down below for you. The code is handsbycolic10. Officially converted to a bag and a jewellery girly. The next best buy that I made in 2023 is one from Longchamp. Um, so I've been on a few shopping trips now with Nick, Nick J Snell. I will link his YouTube channel down below. We have the best shopping trips. He's honestly just the kindest soul. And he has definitely got me looking at Longchamp. So we went into Selfridges and I clocked this bag and I decided to go for it because I just could not get it out of my head. Definitely a trend here, isn't there? Like I'm definitely gravitating. Some of my best purchases have actually been some of my more affordable purchases. Uh, so this is my Longchamp in the raffia. This one is the yellow version. Um, you could actually get this bag in green and pink. I was very tempted with the pink. It also has a strap. This is the perfect beach bag. Grab a few things and go. It's just one of those bags that, I don't know, it makes me smile every time that I see it. My fifth best purchase is one that I've been wearing throughout this entire video. It is this stunning, if you agree, Alexander McQueen blazer. Look at this, like the quality of this and the silhouette that this blazer gives, I am in love with. I will link it again down below, but I actually got this one at Bista Village and it was marked down really heavily. So I believe it retailed at just under 2000 pounds, but it was marked down to, I think about 400 pounds. I am in love, just a simple, it's quite thick actually. So I haven't really worn it too much in summer, but you can just see the tailoring, amazing. Really do want to add some more McQueen pieces to my collection, actually. My next best purchase is quite a controversial one. She is up here. Let's grab the Louis Vuitton Go 1-4 bag. Okay, the reason this is one of my best purchases is I just think it's such a versatile piece. You can take this strap off, but you can top handle it. You can shoulder it with the chain straps. You can cross body it with the chain straps. You can extend this strap by adding this strap to this chain. Oh my gosh, just the ways that you can wear this bag is completely next level. I've done a full review on this bag, which again, I'll link down below for you if you're interested in watching that, but I go into the sentimental reason as to why I purchased this exact colorway. This is definitely one of the highlights of my 2023. The entire experience that I had buying this bag, which I think is what makes luxury luxury right. I went to Louis Vuitton on Bond Street. Um, I was treated so well. I had champagne, canapes. I was taken into a private suite to try this bag on. Everything about that, the entire experience, the memory that this bag has given me, what this bag reminds me of, and just the quality of it, definitely all of that put together makes this one of my best purchases of last year. And now for my best purchase of 2023. Of course it's a bag, of course it is. Um, this is a piece that I was on the fence about, but I fell in love with very organically. I never sought out this bag. I saw it in store, in Harrods, fell in love, couldn't stop thinking about it. And I bought it for my 33rd birthday to myself last year. And it is, if you watch that shopping vlog, my beautiful, Celine 16. Now I have a lot of logos on a lot of my other bags, um, even if they are leather, like you can tell the Louis Vuitton, you can tell the Chanel. So I wasn't actually so sure as to how much I would use the Celine 16 bag because it is a very simple, but chic looking bag. And aside from my everyday bag, which is currently my Givenchy Antigona, this would probably be the most used bag in my collection. I love this bag so much. I would 100% consider another color, another size of this bag. I've been debating a mini version of this bag. I tried a yellow and a sage green version of the 16 mini bag on. However, they have just brought out the small size in this color called light stone. If it is a gray undertone, I think I might have to add another one to my collection, but my best purchase of 2023. So what are my worst purchases? One of them is this Celine Triumph wallet. Now I have spoken about this on this YouTube channel before, and I really love the look of this. And one of the reasons that I was just completely sold on this is you have this zippy coin purse on the back, which you can take off and then you can use these as separate pieces. Um, the only thing is with this, you only have one card holder slot on the front. And then with this part, 
again, you only get like four card holder slots and I like to carry a lot of cards with me. And also these are facing, I believe the wrong way. So when you're trying to get your cards out, when you've got cards in both sides, you kind of like, I don't know, it's so fiddly to try and get cards out of. So whilst I do think this is a really cute little wallet, I was completely sold on it. This one hasn't quite worked out as well as I'd hoped, but we can't win them all, right? This next bag, I knew I was taking a gamble on okay i knew i probably wouldn't wear it as much as i'd like but it was in sale and i just could not stop myself because the price was so good it was i think 40 percent off and it is the Givenchy hobo bag in this beautiful beige color i had tried this on in store and i was on the harvey nicks website i was doing a sale video to share with you guys what is in sale and it was 40 percent off and haven't used it since in all honesty. I do think I will keep this and give it a go. I do really want to try and get into using it, but um, I said this a few times, I, this is why it was so risky for me. It doesn't really have a closure, like it's just kind of an open tote bag other than this padlock going over the front of it. And another reason is, as much as I like this colour, I do find sometimes like beiges, off-whites, they can be a little bit harder to style. I still love the look of this, but maybe it wasn't the best idea to purchase one. Now I talked about my Black Aspinall of London bag being one of my best purchases and I did say that I got it in a different colour and this one's definitely worked out to actually be one of my worst purchases of 2023. Um, again, I've never used this, never taken it out, so it is the trunk bag. The colour's, the colour's great. I do really like the colour, but again, it's a weird one to style and I know that some people will probably prefer this to the black one, but I just think the black one looks chicer easier to style than this kind of tealy colored blue. So yeah, this just goes to show and highlights to me as well, color matters. And on the note of color matters, the next worst luxury piece that I have purchased again is, this is from Aspen Law of London. This is the Mayfair bag, the midi size. And actually uh, Kate Middleton or Catherine the Princess of Wales as she is now known, um, has this exact bag. And I thought this would be great for spring summer because it's in a colour called English Lavender with the Champagne Gold hardware. I'm actually quite glad that I got this bag because it highlighted to me, this is the first Aspinall of London bag that I got, it highlighted to me the quality of these pieces even though I would say they are still quite affordable. I still think it's a really beautiful colour um, but for me I don't really wear pastel colours. Like if I'm going to wear a colour bag I'm much more likely to grab something like my Mulberry Mini Alexa in the Lawn Green which stands out a lot more, like it's just a pop of colour. This is more me, this is more my vibe than something, it's still, it is gorgeous, it really is. But it just goes to show again, sometimes it's all about personal preference, personal style. The next bag I fell in love with, joined a wait list for and ordered it as soon as it came into stock. I was actually unsure as to whether I'd be able to get my hands on one, it is that popular. Lots of affordable bags in this video, quite interesting, I'm only realising this now. Um, but this is the Palen Numero Nerf in the shearling, and this one has the like tan leather, so cute. I did order this, oh my gosh, it's like a cloud, so that's how you get into it. I ordered this um, because I thought it would be a great bag for autumn winter, and um, I have said this in another video though, in the UK, autumn winter means it's often raining, it's often grey, and I don't really want to use a shearling bag because I don't want to get it wet. So as cute as this bag is, it probably wasn't the best idea to go and buy one, maybe an all leather version would have been a better option for me. Do you know what, since you're still here, I feel like I've actually missed, uh, looking at my list now and looking around at what I've got, I've kind of missed two bags that I think are actually some of my best purchases, so I'm going to throw two more into the best purchase bucket. It would be the Marc Jacobs sequin, the tote bag, because look at the iridescent vibes. And how could I have forgotten this? The Louis Vuitton Capucine bag, the BB one with the pearl inlay. I purchased this one pre-loved and I got it for a really great price. I can't believe I missed them off the list. Let me know the best and worst luxury purchases you made in 2024 in the comments down below, but make sure you don't go anywhere because coming up next, I'm gonna be sharing with you what I think are the best and worst designer bags you can buy in 2024. Enjoy.